The last few days has been a long year for the Trump administration. The White House is facing a new storm tonight. The Washington Post and other news organizations report that President Trump divulged highly sensitive information on the Islamic State group to the Russian foreign minister and ambassador last week. It is understood that this intelligence relates to that ISIS plot that we heard about a month or so ago to bring down passenger planes with bombs in laptop computers. He's revealing stuff that is coming largely from this really important intelligence stream. Now, Trump has since claimed that he has the right to share such information. And, and I say not just the right, the responsibility. When guests come to visit, you offer them tea, biscuits and the most secret national security information you have in the cupboard. <laughs> it's not like anything bad could happen. By reporting the city's name, Trump administration officials insisted, that would tip off American adversaries about sources and methods used to gather the intelligence. It would, they insisted, get people killed. The information reported to be of such sensitivity, it is known as code word. Ever I'm given something of code word uh, classification, we do it in a secure room with people who are clear to see the code word thing. It is something done very, very carefully. You never discuss it outside. Yeah, and you better keep quiet or they'll never ask you back to that orgy. <laughs> I'll put it in perspective. There are levels of classified information. There is confidential, that's the level on the bottom. Then there is secret next and then top secret. And then above all of that, way up in the sky, is code word, which is both a cool name for secret intelligence and the name of my new Boyd band. <laughs> Although we tend to say code word. <laughs> we don't. Uh, but it's the way that he revealed the information. It was just so Trumpy. The allegation is that President Trump effectively was bragging. Effectively bragging. We get such great intelligence. We get great intelligence. At some point, Trump starts talking about the great intelligence he gets. He's telling his visitors, I get the best briefings. I get the best intelligence. He is the president and a billionaire, yet still feels the need to show off for other people. I mean, that is like driving a $4 million convertible and still thinking, you know what, I'd better take my shirt off. <laughs> this is how seriously presidents used to take secrets. In 1945, President Roosevelt kept his own vice president, Harry Truman, in the dark that the US were building atomic bombs. The very bombs that Truman ended up dropping on Japan. If Trump was in charge of the Manhattan Project, he'd have been selling bombs in the White House gift shop. <laughs> Russian tourists walking in going, uh, yes, I'll have one snow dome, uh, one snazzy red hat, and uh, two thermonuclear weapons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you take ruble? Ruble? Yeah. <laughs> gift wrap. I want to go. <laughs> Speaking of men with access to vital information, happy birthday to Facebook founder and cyber overlord Mark Zuckerberg, who turned 33 this week and has managed to squeeze as much into his days as he has information out of hours and life from this poor kitty. So, come on, it's just a joke. So, what do you give a man who has everything? Well, it depends. What does he want? For years I've been hearing a lot of rumours in the Valley about how Mark Zuckerberg wanted to, to do more than just Facebook. Um, so, what do you do more than just Facebook? Becoming president, maybe? Mark Zuckerberg might fancy a political career with a very different message from that of President Trump. No, 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 this news looks dubious. I mean, where did they get it? Facebook? <laughs> now, Zuckerberg has it all. A beautiful family, a dog that doubles as a mop, uh, $84 billion. There is, there is no way he would want to get down and dirty with ordinary folk. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg says that he wants to visit and meet with people in every state by the end of the year. He's basically going to all 50 states to visit with Democrats who voted for Trump. An Ohio family found out just 15 minutes before dinner that they'd be having a guest. Their jaws dropped when the Facebook creator walked through the door. He didn't seem to mind that dinner was served on disposable plates. Wait. <laughs> disposable plates? Hang on, hang on. Can we roll this again? Have a look. Have a look. There's a perfectly good set of China <laughs> in the cabinet behind them. I mean, who are they saving that for? Tom from MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> Even so, Zuck is a tech guy, all right? He doesn't make political statements. I hear fearful voices calling for building walls and distancing people they label as others. For blocking free expression, for slowing immigration. It takes courage to choose hope over fear. 
Inspirational. Incidentally, choosing hope over fear is not the slogan of his 16 personal bodyguards. <laughs> but if Zuck was planning to run for president, I mean, he'd be out meeting community leaders, eating at famous local food joints and wearing goggles in factories. South Bend, Indiana. I'm here with my friend Pete Buttigieg, who, who's the mayor here. He made a stop for some pizza. A pit stop for pizza, Kimberly, and where else? At the original Buddies. He spent the day as the guest of Bill Ford Jr. on the floor of the Ford Rouge plant in Dearborn, helping to assemble F-150 pickups. Nice of Zuckerberg to help build a car instead of the app that distracts drivers when they crash it. <laughs> but getting to know him, America doesn't mean that he's interested in politics. There was the Facebook proxy statement last year that said Zuckerberg could serve in government and maintain control of the company. He hired David Plouffe, who is Obama's campaign manager. Zuckerberg also hired Kenneth Melman, who ran George W. Bush's successful 2004 campaign. Yeah, yeah, so what? The guy runs Facebook. He wants everyone to be his friend. That's not a big deal. <laughs> but this is Bible-thumping America. Zuckerberg's an atheist. Voters would never elect an open non-believer. On Christmas Day, he revealed he's no longer an atheist. What? OK, fine, fine. OK, so he's no longer an atheist. But, but, but does he have the one key credential that we all know prepares you to be president? Facebook CEO came to Moscow for several days, so there's plenty of time for interesting meetings. He's meeting with Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev. <laughs> an inexperienced billionaire with access to secrets and friends in Moscow. Everything is going to be fine. <laughs>